Uh, hello, everyone. So my name is Håvard, and uh, I'm a research master student at Leiden University. I'll be presenting about the verbal case clinics in uh, Gorwa with uh, a brief reference to Iraq. And as a disclaimer, I have a, a decent amount of experience with Iraq, so I have a bit of a, a bias there. But uh, yeah, I mean, my data is uh, analyzed in terms of Gorwa to the best of my ability. Right, so uh, as for the basic research question I was uh, investigating uh, in this class, uh, they were basically just, what do the verbal case clinics look like in Corva? Because I know that Idap has this category of morpheme and Harvey has described them in his dissertation uh, on Gorwa, but uh, Harvey's description is not complete. Uh, there are a few gaps there, so I just wanted to sort of fill that out. Uh, yeah, so what do they look like and where can they occur in Gorwa? So this is the structure of the presentation. So I'll just first overview my findings uh, with a nice table. And then I'll exemplify each construction with each of the four uh, cases. And then I'll uh, demonstrate their use of the resumptive verb aller. And then I'll talk very briefly on what the different orders mean. Uh, and then I'll conclude with a view towards Iraq. Uh, and for those who uh, maybe don't know, Iraq is a very closely related language that the two are mutually intelligible, I'd, I'd say. Uh, yeah, so this is an overview of the case clinics. So uh, here we have a label, uh, which is what I'll call them, uh, the gloss, and then two forms. So each of the four case clinics has a preposition form and a verbal complex form. So uh, the preposition form is preposition. Uh, it occurs outside the verbal complex. And then in Iraq and Gorwa, you can put a lot of arguments inside the verbal complex. Uh, and when you do that, you get these verbal complex internal forms. Uh, and here there is, uh, I think, a, a bit of a connection to the earlier presentation by Titi Lola. So uh, we saw there uh, wa and uh, ner being used for adverbial meanings, uh, and these are the same things. Uh, yeah, Andrew and Titelola think it's ner, but I think it's nar. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, this is sort of a, a schema of the of the Gorba sentence. So you have the verbal complex, which is in the middle which is uh, defined by the selector auxiliary on the left side and the verb on the right side. Uh, and arguments can be inside here, and so can the uh, verbal case clinics, in which case they take uh, these, these forms. Uh, and you can also use the clitics outside the verbal complex uh, after it, in which case they have these, oops, these uh, preposition forms. Uh, right, so let's uh, start with some data. So looking at the instrumental first. So this first example, I dig with the hoe. So here we have the uh, verbal complex with the auxiliary and uh, the verb here, and then the preposition form, and then the, the hoe, which is being dug with. Uh, and then we have the verbal complex internal form. Uh, so, so then uh, the ho is inside the verbal complex uh, and the instrumental case clinic is now criticized to it, this R here. Uh, and as you can see, when it's outside the verbal complex, it's a preposition, so it's before the noun but inside the verbal complex, uh, it's a enclitic, so it's after the uh, the noun in question. Yeah, and then uh, interesting properties of these uh, morphemes is that they don't actually need the noun to be explicitly present when they are inside the verbal complex. So you can have the uh, verbal form with no no noun, basically, or you can have the noun be outside the verbal complex, but their preposition but the, but the case clinic inside the verbal complex. So here we have, uh, what do you dig with? 
So gar is uh, before the verbal complex, and then a selector is ta, and then the case cliptic is this r here. Uh, yeah, and then the verb dig. So the instrumental case cliptic is uh, introducing this argument, which is outside the verbal complex. Uh, yeah, and the, the verbal complex internal forms, they can either be criticized or they can also be uh, unclitized. They can be full. Uh, and that's what you see in this next example. So, un uh, Then ar is pronounced uh, clearly distinct from the selector complex. So, it's not criticized, but it's it's the same type of construction. The case critic uh, signifies the presence of an argument with an instrumental semantics. Uh, and that argument is the uh, external noun here, ho. And one thing that's important to note is that uh, when you have this construction with a case critic inside the verbal complex, but the noun is outside the verbal complex, then the uh, auxiliary will index that noun. So here we have the form u, which uh, signifies that there is a masculine object present outside the verbal complex, which is the ho. Uh, yeah, and here's just another example, aning inos uh, just the same thing, but with a pronoun, not a noun. So that was the instrumental, and then we had the uh, directive, which uh, signifies movement towards, uh, at least in Gorba. So uh, first a preposition form, which is I, I'm walking to the house. Uh, same thing as with the instrumental, we have the verbal complex, and then after it, we have a preposition, uh, which introduces this towards the house. Uh, towards there is a sort of uh, locational noun. So this is this is a noun phrase amordo. Uh, and then we can also have the verbal complex internal form uh, after a noun phrase. So I walk towards you, ni amorok ihi it. Then amorok is this locational noun, which is like your way, literally. It's a possessive of of way, so your way, and then a directive, so towards you, and then walk. Uh, and then again, we can have the verbal complex internal forms with uh, a noun that's not inside the verbal complex. So, I'm running to the house. The directive is uh, between the selector and the verb, but uh, the noun it introduces to is uh, before the verbal complex. And uh, yeah, the last example here just shows the uh, criticized form where it becomes a uh, approximant. So it's aning do ui he eat instead of ui. But again, the, uh, the criticized and the full forms uh, vary a lot. Uh, right, and then the ablative. So, yeah, same deal we've seen twice now. Aning ago go and went away. I run away from the rain. Uh, subject, verbal complex, preposition, noun, right? Uh, and then for the verbal complex internal forms, uh, we have aning at the way go on. And yeah, as a note, when nouns are inside the verbal complex, they tend to take this uh, this construct suffix, which is why this is e and not i. But the, there is some variation here, so that's not always visible. Uh, but that's why it's a and not i. Uh, yeah, and then again we have the verbal form criticized to only the selector, so aning kuwai uwa Uh Yeah, all the same meanings. I run away from the rain for all these sentences. Uh, and then finally of the four, we have the reason. Uh, case critic. So uh, this has the form as or asma, or perhaps even asuma when it's a preposition. So aning at the aim as I'm running because of the rain. 
uh, and then that's it now. Google One, as much away. Uh, this should be we are running because of the rain. But uh, the two are synonymous. As and asthma are just variants. Uh, and then the same deal again, the verbal form after an NP, so anatloesagogom. And here we have some uh, some variation. So it can either be tloesa or tloes without the final vowel. Or again, as usual, it can be uh, with the the uh, case critic, in fact, not criticized. So the as. And then uh, again, we have the verbal form without the uh, uh, verb complex internal noun. So uh, ah, this should be because of it. So aning u as kogon. I am running because of it. Uh, so the rain is not, in fact, mentioned here. So it's just like a like a pronoun. And again, that pronoun is indexed by the selector, right? So the selector is u because there is a masculine object uh, that is the reason that that masculine object is, in fact, not expressed here. Uh, and then in this sentence, it's the same, but the uh, y is actually expressed. So aning y u as gogon. I am running because of the rain. Okay, so that was the, the basic forms of the four uh, verbal case critics. So uh, then there's the, the assumptive verb alle. So alle is this interesting uh, morpheme that's sort of like a dummy verb that you can use uh, to create like a dummy verbal complex. So if you want stuff that's usually inside the verbal complex, outside the verbal complex, for whatever reason, uh, you have to put that stuff uh, before alle. Uh, because these, uh, the internal, the verb complex internal forms, as we've seen before, are, they are bound morphemes. They cannot actually occur outside the verbal complex. Uh, and alle sort of solves this. So, uh, yeah, here we have just an example of each of the four critics with this alle. So first we have aninga dol kurmor alle, and that's the instrumental with this ar on kurmor. Uh, and notice that when you use this, it's the it's the verb complex internal forms, right? It's the the suffixed uh, critics rather than the prepositions. Uh, same deal with the recent case, Aninga Gogom Kluosa Ale. I'm running because of the rain. Aninga he eats Amoros i Ale. I'm walking towards him. Aninga Gogom Kluewa Ale. I am walking away from the rain. So uh, same deal in all of these. You get the the, the uh, suffixed case critic and then the Ale. Uh, Right, so uh, then I'm going to talk about some differences from Iraq and what they might tell us. So here's again the uh, table I showed at the start with the overview of the forms. And then below is uh, the corresponding table for Iraq. So first off, interestingly, uh, the instrumental preposition has this N in Gorwa, which is missing from Iraq. So in Iraq, it's Ar, and in Gorwa it's nar. Uh, uh, but note that in, in Gorwa, of course, the verbal complex internal form does not have this n. Uh, another difference is that the ablative uh, in Gorwa has a preposition at all, because in Iraq uh, this is just missing. So in Iraq you cannot say, as I showed you earlier, and then I go on what to why with what's preposition. And that's not available in Iraq. Uh, but in Gorwa, uh, it's there and it's fine. Uh, another difference is that in Iraq, uh, the wa, the ablative, is usually not said to be able to occur inside the verbal complex without the noun present. Uh, but this occurs in Gorwa, as we have seen. So 
going back again. Uh, sentences like the this one, an include wagogol, where the ablative is uh, criticized to a selector and the noun is outside the verbal complex are uh, not reported for it up. Uh, yeah, some other differences that there's this seems to be less phonological cohesion between the case critics and their nouns in Gorwa. They are in my data, they are more usually in their full rather than criticized forms. But I suspect that this is because uh, Hezekiah was speaking very clearly <laughs> over, the, over the internet connection. And when you speak clearly, is when you would not use the clitic forms. So that might not be a real difference between Edat and Gorwa. Uh, yeah, as I talked about earlier, the Gorwa paradigm is fuller in a sense because it has this wa uh, preposition. And the differences in form cast some doubt upon uh, a claim by Martin in his grammar that the prepositional forms are derived from a selector a suffixed with the case critic, because uh, nar does not look like a, a a plus the instrumental, and wa doesn't either. Uh, and yeah, there's also a claim. Uh, for Iraq, that the resumptive verb construction, where you have the uh, noun phrase wa ala, is uh, newer, uh, which makes some sense for Iraq because they don't have the preposition. Uh, but with this Gorwa data, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it might help in saying which one is older, but I don't actually have an opinion <laughs> on what it says. So that might be a point for discussion afterwards. Uh, and then finally, as a sort of bonus thing, uh, what do the different orders I've shown here mean? So usually in my examples, I gave uh, synonymous translations, and that's usually what you get as well. Uh, but sometimes you get these sorts of hints towards uh, some underlying semantics associated with having the noun either before the verbal complex or inside the verbal complex. Uh, and I did not look into this very thoroughly in Gorba. That wasn't my main focus. But I did get some, some small data points that show that it's similar to how it works in Iraq, where I have looked into this more. So in Iraq, it's the uh, having the, the noun be inside the verbal complex signals that the clause is imperfective and that the argument is uh, focused rather than topical. Uh, and for a few data points in my, in my Gorba data, it seems that imperfectivity is uh, a factor here as well. So consider these two examples. The woman broke the cup. This sentence is not grammatical, uh, but is so. Uh, the difference is that in the the one uh, the below one, the verb is imperfective, and then the uh, verb complex internal argument is acceptable. But here the verb is uh, not marked for imperfective, which means it's interpreted as perfective, and then uh, it's not accepted. Uh, another interesting data point to the same effect is that these imperfective semantics can seemingly interact with verbal number. So if you consider the first example here, I'm throwing guavas. Uh, that's a normal present tense construction. Uh, and then again, that's not, that's not grammatical if uh, the verb is unmarked for imperfective. But if you mark the verb for uh, imperfective and have the uh, noun be before the verbal complex, you get this sort of distributive meaning. So like, I keep throwing different guavas. So that it's sort of this, uh, this verbal number semantics that seem to emerge when you don't use the internal, uh, the internal objects. Uh, as for the sort of nuances between all the other orders I've talked about. Uh, 
yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what would motivate you to use uh, the preposition form or the uh, presumptive verb construction, for instance. Uh, that's not clear yet. Yeah, and these are my references. So thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Harvard. I uh, want to ask you the standard question that I've been asking everybody today. If you had another session or two with Hezekiah, what would be the very next things that you would be asking him or looking for? Uh, <laughs> well, with just one or two sessions, it's maybe difficult. Well, I would, yeah, give you a few more. Yeah. I mean, I would want to look uh, more into the difference in semantics between having the, uh, the argument internal and external and whether that matches what I have found for it up. That's, right. uh, yeah, that's the main thing. I mean, this is quite interesting because the the um, connection between focus and um, like present tense, I mean, there's a, there's a connection there um, uh, semantically that people have made at least for Bantu languages. So um, I think that there's something interesting there for sure. Do uh, we have any other uh, questions or comments from the group? Yes, Martin. You're muted. Yes, I'm a mutant. Yes, uh, very uh, interesting. Yes, uh, and um, so you say I'm wrong with the suggestion that it is the A plus the, the critic. And I think you're right uh, because of your data that I saw with all the variants of the us internally, so that you can have s and sa and us. That to me is a strong indication that what I suggested, uh, uh, yeah, is problematic. But with the nar, I wonder what you have in mind because to me, it looks so as if it's the ne or na. Plus the R together. So the uh, the conjunction, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. It looks like that, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, how would you go about checking if that's what it actually comes from, right? Uh, is it? Do do people in Iraq say ne ar? No, right? no, 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 no. But do, think... do do the Gorba people because. Uh... Is this some some sort of deep Bantu influence? Or I don't know. Uh, so is that a Bantu construction using the ne, the ne, uh, uh, the, the ah, preposition right. ne, or the preposition na? Is the Bantu preposition na? But does it have uh, instrumental semantics in yes. Bantu? Yes. Ah, then that could be. Yeah. Well, yeah, you would go about by, by seeing if he accepts any variants and things like that. And, uh, for 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 Gorwa, it seemed yeah. like the the n had to be there, <laughs> which is and the r as well. Yeah, yeah. Also, and also of course, the... uh, Harvey and the Bayreuth gang thinks it's uh, ner. I think right. I think I hear ner, but this a a sort of distinction. I mean, you know, you could convince me, but I think I hear ner. Yeah, Which to me, is another <laughs> indication that it is that preposition because that has that is either ner or not. Oh, That's certainly of course. Ne. Yeah. But we I don't. To, we I don't hear it. <laughs> we need to take out prot to check. Do some vowel measurements. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I have to say, I appreciate. Um, just sort of all the variants that you got in the attention that you sort of paid to trying to get similar constructions and then to try to move that around. In my personal experience, that's really difficult. And I mean, I've worked with Hezekiah for a long time. So maybe he's just used to doing these things now. And he finds yeah, he caught on. He caught on for sure. Maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's really nice to have these sort of um, to have these sort of example sentences and the configurations that you've uh, made. I think it's a really good contribution and it's um, but also some of the observations that you've made, the comparative observations, I think it's really exciting and interesting. Um, and we've seen that come up as a theme, yeah, today. But does Hezekiah accept the Ale? Did you try that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all of them, yeah. Okay. That was uh, that was Korba data, yeah. It wasn't Iraq. Okay. 
En dat is Piki hier ook. Dat is Andrew. Who? Hezekiah. Uh, I'm sure he would understand it, but I don't know if he would say he speaks it. So in terms of geography, Hezekiah was born and grew up in the area, probably the furthest geographically away from the from the Iraq speaking okay. area. So he was born and grew up in an area called Endagwe, which is the oh, okay. it's very close to Gidas, for example. So we're talking about almost in Dodoma region. Now, I mean, do those distance do, do those distances make make a make a difference? I don't know. Uh, because I mean, he was very much involved in um, in the church movement as well in terms of a speaker bio. So he would have been in touch with people from from Mbulu diocese as well. He also spent a lot of time. Well, he spent a chunk of time doing um, doing a pastoral training in Kenya as well, right? So he spent time in Nairobi doing this kind of work, you know. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So there's lots of uh, there's lots of interesting sort of details about his. Uh, his uh, linguistic biography, but in terms of where he was grew, grew up and where he settled and lived, it's very much like far away from that area. Um, and he certainly like was never involved in sort of like the ritual complex. Like you get a lot of people will go back and forth to Mbulu for rainmaking or for like if they have a, a big you know issue that they need to solve. He was never involved in that, for example. So, yeah. I... Uh... In, I didn't, not in the data I presented today, but I feel like I saw that he sometimes used the IROC forms for the third person subject, third person object selector. So he didn't have the nasal na, he just had a ga. Uh huh. So I don't know if that was my misinterpretation or if that's something that happens, but. Well, it's an interesting question of what you're hearing versus what I'm hearing, right? Because I've only ever focused on Gorwa. And so I hear what I hear. I mean, when I hear when I hear somebody saying "una," I hear them saying "una." But if they say "una," well, maybe I just I hear the the nasal anyways because I, ha that, I had both. Yeah, <laughs> I, I might be wrong. And of course, Martin would probably say, "Yeah, you get both," you know, as well for Iraq. So I mean, that's a bit of a nuance. But I mean, uh, but I mean, Harvard, like you've you've heard both and you've listened to both. So it's interesting what you're attuned to. I mean, as a, as as a researcher, right? Because I hear Gorwa and I say, "Okay, well, that's the Gorwa form." But if you are sensitized to the difference. Well, you hear the difference, right? And that's that's quite cool. But Yvonne, you have your hand up. Uh, yeah, I have a little question about this dummy verb. Um, can you say a word about uh, the diachrony? So, it, so is it a frozen verb form? Oh, okay. I, I see Martin laughing. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Martin okay. has no clue, and uh, neither do I. But oh, okay, like, but I mean, what makes you think it's a verb? So, so a frozen verb form of what? It's then? not, and I'm not saying it's diachronically a verb, but synchronically. Uh, ah. In Iraq, at least, you use it for uh, for bound verbal morphemes outside the verbal complex. So, ah. uh, I mean, this is not this is not about Korwa, so I shouldn't speak too much about it. But in Iraq, you have I'm sure in Korwa as well, of course, but. Uh, many adverbs can only occur inside the verbal complex, and if you use those, uh, well, not inside the verbal complex, you always use ale. So even if you're saying just like a quick response, like you cannot say quickly, you have to say quickly ale, just as like a short one word uh, response. So it's the purpose is, uh, in my eyes, to make bound verbal material grammatical outside the verbal complex. But and, and it's, yeah, it, and, and it's, it's frozen, or are there other forms? Uh, no, it, it, it doesn't look like a verb, is the thing. Uh, it doesn't okay, have verbal it morphology. It okay. doesn't take inflection or anything. Uh, okay. And it doesn't have the selector either. With that <laughs> said, though, I mean, all, like, al is a common verbal prefix, right? You get it on a lot of verbs. Mm -hmm. uh, the semantics are are, you know. Are, would be weird with that and why would you only get that prefix but you certainly like you know you can if you know if you al com it means like to so com is like continue and and al com would be to i guess be another meaning for continue al is usually together but it's yeah, together often not as well <laughs> yeah i mean it's bleached a lot as well yeah so it's a very common verbal prefix so when i see all i think hmm okay uh, but yeah, in in most other in most other sort of um, regards, I mean, it doesn't look very verbal at all. Okay, 
<laughs> yeah, even I'm also mesmerized by this thing. And in my grammar, I, I call it the resumptive pronoun, but I'm very happy that uh, Harvard doesn't call it the pronoun because for sure it doesn't stand for the noun. Uh, if it stands for anything, then it stands for the verb. So it's a proverb. Um, but uh, uh, the uh, the thing is, what this discussion with Al, I think I have some forms, Alero, don't know whether so, that, and then it gets it gets inflected as if it's a noun rather than a verb. So, I mean, what it is historically, we don't know. I don't know. But so we don't have we don't have cognates in the related languages, Burundi uh, or whatever. <laughs> we don't have that construction in Burundi. I have to check it again with Roland Sabil. Yeah. I, I I remember that he does say something about it. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just look into Roland Sabil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any uh, any proverbs in uh, in Kambata off the top of your head? Yeah, I mean, if a verb is needed, you just use do or say. I mean, that's the that's what you would. These are the dummy verb. I mean, with not much context, but they are clearly verbal. I mean, they inflect and, and so on. Yeah. 